Hi, and welcome to this week's On the Spot. My name is Kevin Hill, filling in for Zach Strickland. And as, as always, we have JP Hampstead here to talk about Hello. the spot, spot rates in trucking. How are you doing today, JP? Doing well, Kevin. How about you? I'm doing great. Doing great. So what do we have? What are the, the major trends right now in, in the spot market uh, over the past week or so? Um, I just think that, you know, it's a really interesting dynamic. Um, our research team characterized it as a fundamental dislocation. And, and what we meant by that was we're trying to get our heads around the idea that volumes can be positive year over year, tender rejections can be positive year over year, but spot rates are still negative year over year, even against a 2019 uh, com comparisons, which are really weak. So like, how does that make sense? And um, just by talking to 3PLs, um, asset-based carriers, kind of looking at different dynamics and how our, our, uh, our data uh, indexes sort of relate to each other, um, we think we have a pretty good idea of, of what's going on. But basically, um, shippers are kind of testing carriers' limits and carriers' willingness to accept lower rates they're um, tendering a lot of mini bid freight, um, sort of at rates that are lower than their contract contract rates, and that that's having two effects. One, it's starving the spot market of freight, um, and two, it's causing tender rejections to slowly creep up. Which, um, since uh, sort of the middle of May, so for about the past month, they've they've moved up and now are above six percent nationally. So the mini bids are really taking the, the, the place of the, the straight spot market right now as carriers renegotiate down uh, to, to reflect the spot market with their asset-based carriers that are already in contract for those same lanes or maybe some, some other lanes. Yeah, and, and more and more of that freight is starting to get rejected. But right now, um, you know, the, the brokers that I've talked to are sort of waiting for the market to flip. So they're kind of in an uncomfortable position where trucks are starting to get fairly expensive, um, at least relative to the contract rates that, that they're getting paid. So, you know, trucks out of LA are charging more than $2 a mile now, which is well above what they were charging this time last year. Um, and, and, and so trucks are expensive on the one hand, but the brokers don't have a lot of spot freight revenue. So they're, they're kind of seeing margin compression and even losing money on their contract freight, but it hasn't, we haven't gotten into that inflationary feedback mm -hmm. loop where the large asset carriers are rejecting freight, which goes into the spot market, which means that all of a sudden the spot market looks good, so they reposition assets into the spot market and reject even more and start that, 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 that cycle the hasn't cycle, right? quite so kicked in yet. So we've been kind of stuck on that phase four of the cycle for quite some time, like almost a year. And, and then you have the, the COVID-19 and, and shutdown, which kind of uh, threw a, a wrench into that, that cycle, at least in short term. Uh, but the, 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 the phase of the cycle, phase one, if you will, uh, of rising, rising, um, rising freight volumes mm -hmm. and lower margin because of the, the spot rate coming up or, or rates coming up to, to squeeze that uh, is, might be starting to happen, which kicks yeah. off the, the other three phases of the four phase cycle coming up. So it's, it's good news. It's painful right now a little bit because uh, of the conditions you, you said, but it kicks off that cycle where profitability goes up for, for freight brokerages. So our general, our general kind of um, base view is that when tender rejections are between seven and 10% is really when you start seeing that feedback loop happening mm -hmm. where you start getting a lot more um, spot freight, rates go up, rejections go up, et cetera. I talked to a CEO this morning who said that uh, he, he thinks of 8% as like the, the kind of where the market um, in flips. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just bring that up because that's already happened in Los Angeles. Uh, tender rejections are, about, are I think 8.8% out of Los Angeles. Um, it, the tightness is starting to spread a little bit. So Dallas was stuck at about 4% for a week, then blew through 5% and is now about 5.2% in the past couple of days. 
So we may, it, it may be starting to catch on. And, and it's kind of like a ball rolling down a hill in a way, like it starts off slow and it gets faster and faster. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of hard to tell where, uh, as things are changing slowly, it's kind of hard to tell um, where we are and how close we are to that, to that sort of knee. Yeah, and it's been interesting this week too in Sonar is that we're nationally we're above six percent tender rejection rates right now, uh, but it's been accelerating. Mm -hmm. Though that trend upward has been accelerating. Uh, right. Zach's been on the min midday market update a couple times. We've talked about that. Is that acceleration? These these big moves day to day uh, in tender rejections. What do you make of that? Um, yeah, no, I think so. I think that there's still a question as to, you know, whether there's sort of enough time left in the summer peak. Normally, July, for example, is, is fairly soft. And and that's another question that you bring up. You know, how much is this? How much of this is seasonal compared oh, to yeah. straight market dynamics of an seasonal approving, versus cyclical? Yeah, exactly. Right, um, and so. That's a good point, and and then furthermore, I would just say that it's possible that the trajectory of this summer peak is different than previous summers, um, because of all the disruption that happened in the first and second quarters. You know, it's just it's hard to say. It um, is. It feels like spring started about the time the lockdown ended, right? Um, right. Which was a late spring, so everyone's just you know summer is uh, about a week away. And we're still getting like surges of port activity, especially on the west coast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not only are container rates really high, but actual um, shipments into. Los Angeles are, are very high as well. That's what Greg Miller was telling me too, our, our Ocean and Maritime editor, is that uh, you know orders are, are and shipments coming in from Asia uh, is pretty healthy right now. Yeah, so it's pretty healthy. So it should should help know, LA out getting that volume in. So what you know, on the one hand, you might if you, if this is a typical summer, you would say like, okay, well, this you know the spot market's going to turn up for maybe the last three weeks and then. It'll fade in, in July and kind of cool off and, and, and that and that sort of thing. But if you if you think that um, you know the amount of capacity that's been taken out of the industry over the past year hasn't really shown up in the data yet, that weak volumes have kind of covered that over. If you think that maybe the, the shape of the summer surge, especially with, with regard to consumer spending and import activity, um, looks different, maybe it's prolonged, maybe it's more of a slow build upward instead of a quick kind of peak and then down. If that looks different, um, you know, the, the, there's sort of, you know, it's, it's hard to call, you know, I, I, th I think I wouldn't want to say like what July is going to look like, what August is going to look like at this point, um, because it does sort of look like the market is on the verge of flipping. And I don't know whether that's going to look like a quick 2019 style peak or whether it's going to be sort of a prolonged uh, beginning of a cyclical change like we saw uh, this time in 2017. You know what I mean? Yeah, and a lot of it just deals with the economy, right? Yeah. It's the aftershocks of the economy. Is there going to be a second wave, it, you know, the, which could hamper things? I, I know a few states are seeing increases yeah. in cases and really a sentiment of the, the consumer feeding into to manufacturing. You know. Right. Uh, so, credit card spending is is uh, going 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 better, right? I mean, right. things have seemed to bottomed out throughout the economy and they're improving, so yeah. that, that should help. One thing that um, I think that we should keep an eye on because, so one of the things we noticed, um, just kind of going back through the data and really trying to understand what happened in March and April with all the coronavirus volatility, is that we, we noticed that this is this is crazy when you think about it, but truckload volumes peaked on March 23rd, which is this exact same day the S and P 500 bottomed, the stock market bottomed, and so when you think about the the volumes peaking as a sign of consumer panic buying, that's the, the consumer panic is correlating very tightly to negative investor sentiment, right, and so. That makes me think that one of the leading indicators that we could watch for, if you know, if we're worried about consumer behavior 
freaking out and, and adjusting to, say, a second wave of infections, we're going to keep an eye on short haul reefer volumes that really show us, you know, kind of the pace of grocery store inventory replenishment. Keep an eye on that because that's, that's what drove that surge in March. Um, if that mm -hmm. starts ticking up, that might tell us that, hey, people are stocking their pantries again. People are starting to hunker down again. We might see um, consumer spending go haywire, et cetera, et cetera. So th we are definitely keeping an eye on that just to make sure that as a kind of a gauge of consumer sentiment to make sure that people are staying kind of on track in their recovery. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, we, we can go back now and look at a little bit of history in the, in the first wave to, to find signs of, of, of what may happen if, if there's another wave of, of COVID, maybe some shutdowns. Uh, I, I think the, the likeliness of a, a shutdown like we just went through uh, in the, the early spring, you know, late winter is in March, I guess, so early spring is, is, is probably not going to happen again. That's not going to happen again, but, um, you know, I think people's willingness to go to large sporting events, to get on airplanes, to go to hotels, to, you know, stay out in crowded bars and things like that, that, that you know, it, it's going to be very, it's going to be variable across the country, depending on sort of, uh, I think the political environment of, of the region, but also just the severity of the pandemic. So like, like it's still really undetermined and it's hard to know how that's gonna shake out. It's something I, I look at all the time, at least a couple times a week are the TSA passenger numbers. And I know, I, I don't know if you've looked Yeah, what's, what's going on? I, uh, over the last week, we've averaged about 400,000 a day, which the coming from- Double from the bottom. Uh, quadruple okay, from the bottom. Okay. We're averaging about 100. Okay. 100,000 in, um, in mid-April, let's say, 100,000 people a day, compared to 2.5 million is, last year. So it's, it was maybe like 3 or 4% at the bottom, that was average. Now, over the last seven days, about four, roughly 400,000 a day. So that's quadrupled in the- But it's still- what, it's still really 20, low. 20% of uh, it's not less even, than 20%. It is less than 20%. It's in the double digits now. I mean, there was yeah. a time in early April was three percent. Yeah, right. Right. Three percent. Three percent of demand. Yeah. The three percent of yeah of, of last year's numbers. So wow. you, you're seeing that you're you're seeing um, open table. You know, the reservations are coming up. They're they're still really depressed, but uh, from a hundred percent down. I mean, they were a hundred percent down. That makes sense. To about eighty eighty low eighties percent down. So I think that like. W businesses and including Freightways and many other businesses, you know, have had this kind of like shaky social contract where it's like, okay, we're just going to agree that like we're not traveling, salespeople aren't traveling, you're not going to have like expensed dinners, you're not going to be able to like press the flesh the way that all um, salespeople instinctively want to do. And that's holding up, but it only holds up for as long as everyone kind of agrees to it. I like know. once your competition starts traveling and taking people out, you kind of have no choice but to, to, to go. To do. So to, to, yeah. I just wonder like when the financial industry, when all different kind, you know, when the transportation industry honestly gets, the sales guys get back on the road, like what will happen? how, you know, whether we're gonna see sort of like exponential rather than a linear growth in demand. It'll be interesting. We have about a, a minute left. What are your, your final thoughts on the, the, the spot market for this week? Yeah, I think I think it's sort of um, all eyes on on LA, Dallas, and Atlanta, really, um, yeah. both in terms of volume and tuna rejections. Hey, I think Atlanta's been hot. Uh, I know LA's been hot. How's Dallas been doing, real quick? So Dallas went from four percent to five point two percent rejections in the past few days. Um, yeah, and looks like it's it's kind of following uh, LA's lead pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 really good news. That's good news. Uh, you know, Dallas being healthy, you know, those are three of the, the biggest markets in, in, in the country. So that, that's really good. What about Chicago, real quick? Chicago, I mean, rates into Chicago are really low. And honestly, rates Chicago to Atlanta are also very low because Atlanta's strong. All right, All right great. That, that wraps it up for this week's On the Spot. Join us next week uh, with Zach and JP.